Hey everyone, this is Chris Crazy House here, and I am back with some Chris Crazy commentary. I know it's been a long time since I've done any formal videos here on this channel, whether it be any of my commentary or any official art videos. I would hope that you've all been enjoying the animation shorts that I have been uploading to this channel. If you have not seen them, all you gotta do is go to my shorts and you can watch them. So it's a lot of animation that I've done over the years. I just take a scene or maybe a piece of it and I'll truncate it into a short. And what I'll do first is I'll put it on my TikTok. Chris Crazy House does have a TikTok that you guys can follow. The links will be in the description box as well as the comment section. But I take those TikTok shorts and I also apply them to my Instagram and also to my YouTube channel. So that way, if you follow me on any of those three platforms, you'll be able to see my shorts, animation shorts that are playing on there. And like I said, I hope you folks have been enjoying those. A lot of these animations are ones that no one's even seen before. Like people will comment on them that has not seen that unless you've been following me for a long time. You know, I do have long time fans who have followed me since the early 2000s who have seen some of these, but there are others who have not seen, seen it at all or who have just gotten to know me over the last few years. But I do say, I will say that I appreciate all the support that I get from everyone and all the great comments that you folks have left on my community page or on any of the videos that I have uploaded. So I'm thinking officially I'll come back to doing more of weekly art videos probably in March. I'm thinking March the 10th, that Thursday evening. That is when I will make my full comeback. I'm hoping everything goes well because I've been going through a lot uh, personally and health wise. I'm not going to share it all right now. I'll probably give you guys a lowdown once I get past a few other things, but I've just been going through a lot. So it's been hard for me to kind of knuckle down and get, you know, a weekly video done. I've been able to, you know, just concentrate on my actual work. So any type of illustration work that I've been doing for clients, I've just been concentrating on that. So that that's all I've kind of been consuming myself with. And I have been creating a lot of content for this channel, but uh, it probably won't get started again, like I said, probably until March. And like I said, uh, March 10th will probably be the first official art video that I upload. We'll, we'll see how things go. But I do have lots of great stuff. If you've been following me on Patreon, if you are a Patreon, you've seen some of the sketches I've done. I've, I've done a lot of fun fan sketches. I've also done some great animal drawings that people have been enjoying during the winter time. And you can download those as coloring pages. So if you are a Patreon of Chris Crazy House, you can go download that artwork right now. You can also download lots of great assets that you can use for whatever 2D animation or games that you want to create. So, uh, also, if you want to buy any of my products, you can always go to my online store. Lots of great comic books, all my original comic books, graphic novels, and action magazine, as well as my posters and stickers are all available on my Chris Crazy House store at Store Envy. And once again, the link for that will be posted in the description box as well as the comments section. So, let me get on to the subject of this Chris Crazy commentary. So, let's talk about the Rings of Power. Because there's been a lot of controversy, at least on the internet, with when they, they announced that they've been working on this series for a long time now. And people were kind of wondering where it was. But I think because of the pandemic, it didn't get, it wasn't able to be produced and to be pushed out there like they wanted it to. But now we're starting to see actual visual images of what they came up with for the Rings of Power. And like I said, it is supposed to be a prequel to the Lord of the Rings. Now, you have a lot of people on social media who are, I guess I can say they're part of the anti-SJW crowd. They don't like anything that is woke. And if you, they see anything where like it's a person of color or a female in any type of lead role, they will automatically accuse that project of being woke. So let me say this. 
okay because i i want to make sure that this video is unique from a lot of the nonsense that you see on social media i am not with either camp okay so this is not me spewing or regurgitating the ideology of either the liberal side who is pro putting just putting token characters or redressing classic white characters and making them black and putting on you know basically white characters hand-me-downs in order to just have some sort of diversity i'm not with that crowd i'm also not with the i just hate every diverse character in any uh, project and the reason i don't go along with them so much is because they they have uh an agenda of their own and it only seems to pertain to if you change a certain character into a female or if it's a character of color you know now if you make a character white they don't seem to have a problem with that and they're very you, you can hear the crickets <laughs> you know what i'm saying when they when a, a, a character that probably should be black is made white they have no problem with that in my opinion if you don't get upset that for centuries, Jesus Christ has been portrayed as a white European, or you have no problem with uh, ancient comedic gods being portrayed as European, then I don't want to hear people whining about uh, fantasy characters being portrayed as African. You see what I'm saying? All right, so I'm not in that camp either. That's all I'm saying. But the problem I have with some of these projects is I don't want to be tokenized in any of these in these uh, fantasy series. And I don't think that that's necessary for... First of all, that's not necessary for any black fan to appreciate or enjoy a certain story. Like, I don't need to see a black character there in order for me to appreciate great characterization or great storytelling. You see what I'm saying? So for, for, those, for those liberals... Who, who think that that's the only way that I'll enjoy something, I, I want you to know that that's not true, okay? Uh, for obvious reasons, because there has been such a lack of black or African-American characters within a lot of sci-fi and fantasy fandom, you have to look a little bit deeper into certain characters and appreciate what they might be bringing forth, okay? So, in a way, it's almost a little bit more pure in that regard. You, you regard these characters a little bit better and get more inspiration from them even though they don't necessarily look like you now i do think representation is important but i'm on, i'm in the camp of we can create our own representation we don't always have to rely on another group of people to force representation on or put it out there for us okay that's not necessary we are more t just as talented just as creative and just as amazing as storytelling, we've been telling stories for centuries, we can create something that represents us and it will actually be better at telling our own story because we were there to, and we can we can identify with each other and identify with the emotions that will be put into those characters. We don't always need someone else to, like I said, make a token character for us to feel happy or to make us feel like we're part of the party or part of the quest. Uh, I've said this years ago that sometimes you have a lot of black fandom out there who are almost like their own worst enemies in this regard because they do beg to have these types of characters put into these types of series. And I, I think that's the wrong way to go about it. I remember years ago, you had, uh, there was an interview between the creator of Game of Thrones, George R. R. Martin, and he was being interviewed by this black fan and this black fan kind of put him on the spot saying, you know, you, why don't you put more black characters into uh, the song of Ice and Fire and all this other nonsense, right? And I, I just kind of rolled my eyes when I saw that. I think that's that's kind of weak. Uh, when George R.R. R. Martin created this fantasy, he created it for him and his, his own sensibilities. It, it was rep a representative of his own history, his own European history. And you're not included in that. I don't know why certain black fans don't understand that. The same thing with J.R.R. Tolkien. The world of Middle Earth is based, he was trying to create a mythology for Great Britain because he felt that Great Britain did not have its own mythology. Like he said, you know, uh, he felt that Great Britain borrowed too much of its mythology from other sources. So he wanted to create his own mythology based on where he was from. 
And there's nothing wrong with that. I don't feel, feel there's a problem with that. There's a lot of people that think this new series is somehow, like I've heard the, the, the arrogant mindset of, you know, these are the people that J.R.R. Tolkien left out of his saga. He left them out for a reason because it's not about them. It's about his people. It has nothing to do with your, whatever your modern sensibilities about diversity are. You see what I'm saying? That's not why they created these things. They weren't creating this to market it to the world. They weren't creating these things to be popular for and fit into certain demographics. They weren't even thinking about that when they created these, these works of art. Okay? And to try to twist it and make it seem like you know better because you're going off of whatever modern politics says, I think that's the wrong way to go. And I, I think they know that. I mean, most of this stuff is just a money grab. The, the showrunners of this new Rings of Power show has have even admitted that they don't have the rights to any of the prequel work that J.R.R. Tolkien made for Lord of the Rings. So a lot of the un, un, uh, unfinished stories that he created and a lot of the, the Silmarillion, which is a great book. If you never read it, I'll, I advise go picking it up. But it gives you a good sense of what is the history of the Middle Earth. Like the Silmarillion is almost kind of like almost like the Bible of Middle Earth. And I would advise you, if, like, if, you, if you're really into that lore, go pick it up and check it out. But, uh, you know, these people, they don't even own the rights to that. I think the family has kind of kept tight reins on that to, so that their work doesn't get bastardized. So basically what you're seeing with this Ring of Power series is they're just making stuff up. They're making up a lot of their own characters just for the show. And kind of taking little things from the, the things that they do have the rights to, which is they just have the rights to the Lord of the Rings trilogy, the original book trilogy. So they're kind of picking and choosing here and there to make their own concept. And that's why a lot of people think it doesn't look as good as it could. Okay, it looks still looks kind of cheap. People are not very enthused about it. And I can understand that. You, if, for those who are anti-SJW, if you don't like this show, based on this, this merit and the way it looks. I can understand that because I've talked with a lot of black fans who don't think this show looks good either. It's kind of cheesy, right? It looks like they didn't really put too much effort into it. So, I mean, I'm not, I don't really care for it. I'm not really looking forward to it. There are plenty of amazing black authors who create fantasy and, and uh, you know, fantasy books, games, and everything else that if 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 you if you liberal folks out there are really serious about creating some content with diversity on screen go talk to some of those black authors out there who are already creating such things you don't have to shoehorn black people into things that that don't involve them you can create stuff that was actually made by us and put it to screen if that's what you're if you're serious i, I know a lot of you aren't like i said before a lot of this stuff is corporate money grabs to capitalize off a popular name. So they'll take something as popular as Lord of the Rings and they'll throw as many diverse characters in there as possible to get it as, as wide of an audience as they can. But then they get kind of offended when people say that they don't want to see that, right? Because they know because the people that are fans of it know that the story has been bastardized and changed and it's not what they recognize as the source material. So if you're serious about creating these things, go out there and find some black fantasy authors who do great work and have great concepts and can portray characters that look like them in a proper sense. Because one of the things that I worry about and why I don't always get excited about these projects where they just throw black characters in there is there's always something janky done to the black character. You know, uh, a great example of this is if you watched Game of Thrones, you saw, what's his name, Grey Worm, the, one of the, the unsullied soldiers. All those guys are castrated. So, so they're going to portray a black male character, and he's castrated and can't even consummate any type of relationship with the black woman he loves. You see, see like little stuff like that is annoying to me. And I, that's why I say, I just just leave black my black face out of these things if all you're going to do is bastardize me or diminish me in some shape, form, or fashion. If you're just putting a black character in there just so the, the black character can, can dive in front of the bullets or the arrows and save the white characters, don't put me in there. 
<laughs> okay? Just leave me out of it. I'll just watch the white characters. Don't do that to me. Because that's more traumatic and that's more disturbing to the black mind to do that. Like, I was just re-watching Terminator, uh, Terminator 2, and the, 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 the character of Miles Dyson, you're killing him and he's being taken away from his family. That was traumatic for me to see when I was a child. So, I'd rather you just not have a black character in there, okay? Instead of just having this black father who had this great family, who was a smart, intelligent man, living the good life, and then he goes out to help these white heroes and then he gets killed and taken away from his family. Don't put me in there if that's what you're going to do. See what I'm saying? I'm not here to be your sacrificial lamb just because you can't figure out whatever else to do with the black character. Or don't diminish me. Or don't emasculate me. Don't don't portray my black male-female relationships in some messed up way. Don't make it seem like we can't get along. Don't put me in there if you're just going to mess me over. Okay, that, that's my philosophy. I'd rather you just go ahead and get some real black creators who know what they're doing with, with black characters than to do that. So that's my opinion on that, folks. You guys can let me know how you feel about it in the comments section. I'd very much like to hear what you have to say about this Rings of Power series. And once again, I apologize for being gone for so long, but lots, is, lots has been going on. I might explain more as time goes on, but I appreciate all the support you folks have been giving me over the, the last few months or so. Anyway, Chris Crazy House, signing out. Peace.